Welcome to Fossil Ridge Games. Today we're talking about Dune Spice Wars. This is going to be a basic how to play video and basic strategy guide. In Dune Spice Wars, there are four different factions that you can play. First is House Atreides. Next, we have House Harkonnen. Smugglers, and finally, the natives of Arrakis are the Fremen. And as you can see, as I mouse over these different factions, there's a lot of different bonuses and penalties that are associated with playing each faction. What I'm going to do is go through all of the basic resources, and then I'm also going to go through all of the basics of things like military units, militias, villages, all the tech trees, there's voting and espionage so that you have a basic understanding of the core mechanics of the game before you select one of these factions. Since there's so much detailed information on each faction, it's really hard to figure out what you're doing and how you're playing it unless you have a basic understanding of the game mechanics. I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of gaining money in Dune Spice Wars. You're going to see in the upper left-hand corner, there is a spice area in which you can see the exchange rate for spice versus solari so in this case one spice is going to uh, get you 2.5 solari what's interesting about this there's a slider over here in which you can adjust how much money you're getting versus how much spice is actually coming in so you can adjust this up and down so you can favor spice production or you can favor solari production or you can do some place in between now why is this important there is a imperial tax location that i'm pinging right now and notice that there's a timer it says remaining time 23 days if this time elapses and you haven't given 168 spice in taxes you're going to suffer a penalty in addition if you do pay the Imperial tax, it's going to raise your hegemony rating. And as you can see right here, there's a location that says spice tax paid. So every time you pay a tax, you're going to get some of these points. Now, if you hit 25,000 points and you're the first faction to hit 25,000 points, the game ends and you win the game. So this is extremely important. Something else that you have to understand is that this rating also impacts your overall power on Dune itself. So you hit certain milestones and different abilities are going to unlock for your faction, um, which is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and just pop into this screen really quick and notice that we have the hegemony rating that's right here. So at 5,000 and at 10,000, we're going to get other specialized abilities. So just understand that harvesting spice is one of the key ways to maintain your superiority in the game. I want to make a few additional notes on the spice and solari trade exchange. Notice that this stockpile will keep building. There's a maximum to that. So you'll hit a point where you can't actually stockpile any more spice. And if that's the case, you can then shift all of it into solari production and then the stockpile essentially stops building and then on the other end of the spectrum sometimes if this exchange rate gets really really high you might want to siphon your spice production more into money so maybe you need to buy some troops or you need to um, you know buy some militia whatever it is just understand that this slider can move up and down and then another thing I want to mention is this Imperial tax. Every single time you pay the tax, the next time you pay it, it's going to go up and up and up. So as the game progresses, these tax increases are going to become uh, heavier and heavier and higher and higher, and it becomes more and more crippling. So as a strategy, you need to constantly be worried about spice production. In addition to that, just understand that that can be an enemy's weakness as well. If you can strike one of the other factions' spice production, they're going to have to start suffering the effects from having not paid their taxes. So you get these sort of debuffs that occur to you every time you don't pay a tax and they pile up. So they are cumulative and you really start having some problems. In addition to that, if your enemy isn't paying their taxes, their hegemony rating isn't going to keep increasing. It's going to be a little bit stagnant and you can outpace them essentially with these victory points. 
Next, we're going to talk about the other resources present in the game, and the first one's going to be Solari. And notice that there are quite a bit of upkeep costs associated with your Solari production, and this can be something that sneaks up on you, and then you start going into negative Solari, essentially production, and that can be very devastating to your economy. Now, please notice all of the different red types of upkeep costs that are associated, and there's a whole host of them. You know, a lot of it is related to buildings, and then a lot of it is also related to your armies. So you can kind of see on here that um, at the very bottom, my army is a pretty heavy contributor. So the army is going to be your military units that are actually out on the table. So the, the more troops you have, essentially the more taxes and upkeep you have on them as well. And then you can see too, a lot of the other buildings in your empire, you can have to balance that very, very carefully. So spice production is very much important and you have to understand that you can't build too quickly and too fast, otherwise you're gonna go into negative solari production. The next resource that's present in the game is Plascrete. So think of this as a building material, and you need to expend this building material to obviously put new buildings into place, but you also have to perform upkeep on your buildings as well. So just understand and, and look at the green and then also look at the red stuff on the screen, and that will walk you through that you have to have uh, Plascrete production in order to maintain your buildings. Now something that can occur is that votes can occur in which Plascrete production goes up um, and also really the upkeep on it so you can suffer some pretty massive effects where an enemy will impose like a Plascrete almost like upkeep tax on you and if you have a lot of this stuff and you're really at the razor's edge it can really hurt you poorly. Next up we have manpower and manpower directly relates to you building your militia units. It also directly impacts your army. So you have to pay some upkeep costs based upon your armies as well. So you don't want to grow too quickly and too powerful. And also too, if your militia get defeated and you don't have a reserve of manpower, you can't actually rebuild them in the militia and your villages will be prone to attack um, from the Fremen or other enemies in the game. Next up we have fuel cells and most of the factions actually have fuel cells. I don't believe the Fremen do, um, but this is something that is kind of important and this is really for spice production and ornithopters and if you can see the spice refineries absorb a lot of the fuel cells that you need. So just be sure that over the course of the game you have one or two locations that produce fuel cells. There is a building that you can put into the village that helps you with uh, fuel cell production. And then if you come over uh, right here, there's this volcano looking icon. And this is something that if you build in the village, uh, you can actually have a fuel cell factory and then it keys off of this location, that energy source, and that's how you can build more uh, fuel cells essentially. Next up is water, and water is really important for expansion. Every single village that you have is going to consume water. So you need to be constantly giving water to all of the people in your villages. So you can't have so many villages that you don't have enough water. So you have to very much ban manage this as well. It's just another resource. So water, if you're not giving your people enough, they will revolt and rebels will form and they'll just kind of say, hey, we're not working for you anymore and they'll take over the village. And if you don't defeat the rebels in time, you will lose your village uh, permanently. So a lot of these water losses that you can suffer can really pull your entire empire out of alignment. So when you are essentially looking for water, you want to look for locations that have uh, basically a high wind strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and ping this at the bottom. If you can see, there's a wind strength of five at this location. And what's pretty cool about that, that's a great place to put down a wind trap. So if we can do this, we're gonna put this down 
And notice it's going to be plus three water for each level of wind in the region. So you always want to make sure that you are doing that effectively. Okay, and then the final sort of resource is going to be authority. And this is also your way to expand. So if you want to take a new location um, in the game, you have to pay a certain amount of water and you have to pay a certain amount of authority to take it over. So when I click on this village, it's showing that I need five water. And I'll also need 251 authority to basically annex that village and bring it into my empire. At this point, I only have 127, so I have to wait until it goes up to 251. I can't act actually annex that village. I can always pillage that village, but I can't actually take it over. So a lot of this stuff, these are the basic resources. And then finally, we have the Lonsrod standing. And the higher the standing goes, and you can see on the screen, there's different tiers and you get different bonuses that are associated with that. Next, we're going to talk about some of the other types of things that you can do. And these are all going to be located on the right hand side of the screen. Notice that we have all of our opponents. In this case, I'm kind of late game and I have eliminated the Atreides. I've also eliminated the smugglers. And something that you can do is literally wipe out their capital uh, sort of city in the game. And if you do that, the entire faction is actually removed from the game. Um, and in this case, only the Fremen um, are really remaining. So what you can do is click on their face and it opens up a trade window. And just understand that if you are deficient on a certain type of resource, you can always trade with with an opponent essentially and you can also perform treaties with them as well so this is a really easy window to sort of miss in here and it's kind of um, hard for you to necessarily have all of the resources you need at a given time so just understand that you can trade and obviously you can make them angry by too much military action against them and they are going to be less likely to trade with you um, next up, we have sort of the tech tree, and what we can see below here is what's called knowledge. So the higher your knowledge, the faster you can research different tech uh, in the window. What's cool about this game is that you have four different tech trees that are present, so you can really focus on things that you enjoy playing. Uh, you know, so maybe you're more militaristic. So in this game, I definitely spent a lot of my tech upgrades, you know, in military. I also really like sort of my economic um, types of things. And then you can always sort of upgrade your units. And then the blue is going to be sort of like espionage related and diplomacy styles of things. So just understand that if you have a higher knowledge base, which is right here, you can research more uh, upgrades a lot faster. Next, we have the Lonsrod Council, and this is where a lot of your um, voting will occur. And in this case, we don't have any resolutions present because we're kind of in between the cycle. Uh, but you can spend these influence points on voting, which is a pretty cool aspect of the game. And typically, there will be three different things that come up um, for vote. And then finally, we have the espionage window. So below here, we can have a maximum of 10 agents. And then we also have what's called intel. And you can cap this, this thing out where you just have so much intel you can't actually gain anymore. But you can click on the espionage window. And in this case, you have different agents and each agent will have a different ability and you can send them to interface with a whole host of different things one you can infiltrate enemy empires um, secondarily there are four sort of neutral factions and you can send your agents to those factions each one you send to the different faction will give you different bonuses and then finally on the right hand side of the screen we have operations so operations will have a basic minimum level. So if we look over here, like Arrakis, we have a level three. Spacing Guild is level three. Uh, the Chelm is at level two and the Lance Rod is at level two as well. So some of these uh, missions that you can send them on 
have minimums that you have to have, you know, like this requirement. You can, you have to have a certain amount of, uh, you know, faction with these different neutral types of things. And all you have to do is basically click on something and then you can send one of your agents to essentially sort of research that. But you're gonna be using Intel, so this one's gonna cost 50. Once it's, it's done, then it comes up here into the operations box and notice that I'm capped out. I don't have the requirements to have a fourth or fifth operation, but I have three active operations currently up here. And notice that the operations are gonna appear here at the top of the screen. And these are kind of like quick buttons. All you have to do is left click on them to activate them. Um, something I also recommend too is if you are going to execute an operation, just go ahead and pause the game. Um, so that you can target the operation, you know, appropriately and you don't accidentally miss target. So to kind of sum it up, there's a lot going on in this game. Resource production is huge. You have to constantly manage a whole host of different resources. There is a tech tree, which is pretty exciting. You can go ahead and customize your empire based upon that tech tree. Next up, you have voting, which is a really exciting part of the game. And then finally, you have espionage. You can send agents against the different houses that you're fighting. You can also send them to influence all of these neutral factions. All of this stuff together is a lot to manage, but it also makes the game really exciting and fun. To kind of like sum it up though, just understand that you don't have to feel frantic when you're playing the game. Anytime you feel like pausing the game, go ahead and just hit the space the space bar on your keyboard and it will pause the game and then you can make some intelligent decisions. Um, just feel like you don't have to be going you know full speed all the time and don't let the game overwhelm you. Uh, there's a reason why you can pause it and you can issue commands and then you can just simply unpause the game. Now that you understand the basic core mechanics of the game it's time to pick your faction. As an example we're going to click on House Atreides and you can see right here on the left hand side of the screen are the faction bonuses that you're going to begin the game with right out of the gate. Next up you have the two different faction bonuses that will occur as your hegemony rating increases. Uh, the first milestone is at 5,000 and the second milestone is at 10,000. Next on the right hand side of the screen we have four different counselors that you can pick. So each game you play you can pick two of the four counselors. Now what's interesting about this is that they have ratings so as we look at lady jessica she is classified as hard to play the other three counselors for the atreides are considered easy to play so now that you understand the basic core mechanics go ahead and look through the list and select two of the counselors that will fit your play style notice that each of the different houses will have different faction bonuses and they also have drastically different counselors that you can play. What's interesting about each of these is that uh, sometimes they have specialized actions that they can perform at the villages. In addition, some of the playstyles are drastically different and it's kind of fun to explore the game. So there's a lot of replayability value when it comes to this game. You have essentially four different factions, and then within each faction, you have four different counselors that you can play, and you can select two each time you play the game. I'm gonna walk you through a quick way to get going in Dune Spice Wars when you just start the game. The first time you play this, it can be a little bit daunting because there's so much stuff going on in this game. So first up, when it pops into the game, hit the space bar on the keyboard that is going to pause the game, which is up here, sort of in the upper right hand portion of the screen. Next, what I kind of recommend doing is playing this game on full speed and the reason why I say that is that at any time you feel like you need to make a decision you can hit the space bar to pause the game so I'm going to go ahead and increase the speed up to maximum which the current speed is now at, at times two and that's something that will keep your games a little bit shorter so when you're not making decisions the game's going to be going full speed and you can get through a game much faster than you can uh, normally. So first when the game starts you're going to have your capital city and you're going to be given an ornithopter. Go ahead and click on your ornithopter and then sort of zoom out 
and you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. What you're looking for is an area around you where there is spice. So uh, kind of in the middle of the screen, there is this purple icon that is spice. And we need to get a spice facility going as soon as possible so we can start paying our taxes to the empire. So I'm going to left click on the ornithopter, then I'm going to right click on the territory. Notice that the ornithopter is going to travel over to this area and it has found a spice uh, harvesting location. Next, the ornithopter, go ahead and right click on the rock in it and notice that it's going to start uh, analyzing the area and what you're looking for is your first village. Now as that's happening, go ahead and click on your siege and start recruiting some units. And kind of what I recommend is just recruiting two sort of basic warriors for your first set of units, and they're gonna start building in your capital city. Now that your ornithopter has sort of scanned the first location, go ahead and select it, and there's an auto recon button on here. Go ahead and hit that. And if your ornithopter is done doing its thing, it won't just sit there on the map, it'll start auto exploring the rest of the area. Now, as your troops are building, what we're going to be looking for is a Plascrete production site. So hopefully our ornithopter can find one. And this will help in our sort of second part of our phase. Here is a quick tip that I find pretty useful. If you want to group your troops, Go ahead and drag a box around them by holding the left uh, mouse button, then releasing it, hit control, and then one. And what's great about this is that if you ever hit the one button on your keyboard, it's going to pull up all of those troops. So just like, you know, some pretty popular real-time strategy games, you can group your units together um, as kind of a quick key. Now that we have our two armies out on the map, it is time to attack the neighboring village so we can take control of that spice harvesting location. So you can right click on a village and the units will auto attack, but what will happen is the local militia will attack you immediately. So what I recommend doing is move right next to the city, the village that you're attacking, and then right click on it to attack. That will allow your troops to get in at close range without getting uh, shot up and torn up immediately. So as you can see, the battle is going on and you can click on different units. If you feel one of them is about to die, you can always back that unit off so it doesn't take lethal damage and then put it back into the fight. That will usually disrupt the AI and it will uh, target a different one of your troops. All right, so this village has been defeated, and what we have is called Take Control. Note that it's going to cost you 5 water and 34 authority to take over this area. So we're going to go ahead and select that, and a little sort of timer bar is going to appear. Once that's done, the city, uh, I'm sorry, the village will be ours to control. Now we have taken control of our first village. Go ahead and simply left click on it. It's going to open up a window. The first thing that we're going to see is that you can build militia. Um, so first I'm going to build a spice harvesting refinery to get that going as soon as possible. So I'm gonna come in here and notice it's gonna cost 500 plascrete and four batteries and it also has an upkeep cost of four so i'm going to left click on it and now it allows me to place it anywhere um, in this location i'm going to go ahead and put it up here on the top left and if you notice a timer has now appeared it's going to take a decent amount of time for that building to come online while that's happening i'm going to pause the game and i'm going to build militia in this village Here's the reason why. I don't want to lose my village. I don't want to lose my spice production, so I always want to make sure I have enough militia. So go ahead and click in this spot. I prefer building just the normal militia. I find them to be a little bit more hardy. And if you notice, it's going to cost you 50 solari and five manpower um, per each one of those. Now I'm going to unpause the game. And if you notice down here, 
the timers are going for everything in the village and everything for my militia. Now that we've taken our first village and we have our first spice refinery on the way, on the right hand side of the screen we have our first sort of technology that we can develop. So when you come into this window there's a lot going on and just understand when you first start the game you can only pick one of the four different techs that you can build because everything else kind of builds off of those. So what I recommend um, people do is that you want to decrease the authority cost for annexing villages. That's going to be how you spread across the map. So I typically like doing the local dialect studies. And then the one underneath of it is minus 15% village building construction costs. That's something else that I really like as well. So I'm going to simply hold the control button down and I'm going to left click. And what this means is that after the one on top finishes building, it's immediately going to start the next um, tech upgrade. And then I'm going to move over here to survival training and I'm going to hit control and I'm going to left click is that uh, on that tech as well. So I'm going to have a one, two, three sort of conversion. If you do not activate a new upgrade once the other one is done, you kind of lose some of the time because that knowledge is just going nowhere. So I always recommend having at least one other technology queued up. And so as you can see right here, we're going to go one, two, and then three. Next, I want to talk about how to keep your military units alive and make sure that they don't run out of supplies. So I've clicked on one of the scavengers, which is one of my military units, and notice that it has an 18 attack power, it has 400 health, 3 armor, but it also has this supply of 100. And if the supplies run out on a unit, that basically represents it's running out of food and water, and then it will start taking health damage, and it can actually suffer lethal damage if you don't get that military unit back to a um, territory in, in which you own. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game, and I'm going to take this unit over here um, outside of my territory, and if you notice, the supply drain begins immediately, so that unit is starting to run out of supplies. I'm going to move that unit back to my friendly territory, and if you look, the supplies immediately start coming back. It is entirely possible for you to lose an entire army if you're not paying attention to where they are. So right after you take a location, make sure that your units aren't just hanging out in the desert because if they are, they will run out of supplies and they will die. Next, we have what's called Deep Desert. And if you ever click on a territory on the map and it shows up as Deep Desert, what that means is that you are going to suffer a plus 300% daily supply drain. And as we saw before, your supplies run out pretty quickly, but if you move one of your troops into um, open deep desert, it drains really, really fast and you start losing your supplies. And then after you, you lose your supplies, your health starts dropping until your um, unit is eliminated. Once you run out of supplies, you have to get back to safe territory next to a village in order for you to restore your hit points and your supplies. Be really, really careful and cautious with open deep desert. It can be absolutely lethal. Now we have our first harvester has popped up on the map and we're going to need to start harvesting spice. So on the right hand side of the screen there's a harvester area and if you look there is a timer that is flashing on this harvester. What that means is that it's inactive. So go ahead and left click on your harvester and it's going to bring it up. There is a deploy button that you can hit for that and what that means is that it's going to go to the spice field and start harvesting spice. Right below it is an auto recall function. This allows a carryall to come and pick up the spice harvester immediately if a sandworm shows up. A sandworm will literally eat the harvester and destroy it, really nullifying your spice production uh, for a small period of time as the harvester has to then be rebuilt. This is personally my thought. I think you should auto-enable um, the auto-recall function so that your spice harvesters don't get eaten. 
Uh, when you do that, though, just know that you're going to suffer a minus 5% spice production penalty. And that's just because the, the carryall is going to be fairly conservative and it's going to want to um, keep that carryall safe. So as we can see, the carryall is picking it up and it's going to take it up to the spice field and then deploy it. Once it drops onto the spice field, we're going to see that our spice production is actually going to start. So we can see that now our spice production is plus 13 and it's starting to accrue. Now, I'm going to pause the game real quick and jump over to the Imperial Bribe. These are the taxes that we have to pay. So we have only eight days in order to hit the first Imperial tax. So at this point in the game, we can maximize our spice production if we're concerned about hitting that first deadline. So as you can see, now our spice production is at plus 19 and we're building our stockpile, but we have to hit 80 in eight days, otherwise we're gonna suffer that tax penalty. As the game is progressing, we have just obtained our first agent. So at the top left-hand portion of the screen, we're gonna see this uh, window. We're gonna go ahead and click on it, and our first agent has arrived. Each of your agents is going to have sort of a unique ability. Some of the factions allow you to have multiple abilities um, per agent. So all you have to do is left click on the agent and then you tell where you want it to go. You can use it to spy on other factions, infiltrate the other factions. You can use it as counterintelligence, which is a defensive sort of mode. You're going to prevent enemy agents from entering your area. Or what you can do is send it to um, act as a liaison between you and one of these other neutral factions. The one at the top of the screen, this is the Arrakis infiltration um, location that you can put your agent. In my opinion, this is where you should start and I'll kind of walk you through why. So if you click on this, it's going to increase your authority production, your intel production, and your Arrakis infiltration production. And you're going to go ahead and click on that and now you're sort of aligning yourself with Arrakis. So we're going to go ahead and close that window. And now what we're going to do is look for locations on the map in which we can go investigate with that agent. So over on this side of the map we have ruins and our ornithopter has found the ruins. And on the left hand side of the screen notice it says Arrakis infiltration you have to have an agent you can't actually choose this option unless you have allocated an agent to Arrakis so that's why I just personally pick the first agent I get to go into Arrakis so I can start um, sort of unlocking these bonuses and this one's going to advance a random accessible development by two days and so that's going to be in our tech tree Alternatively, if we wanted to, we could send a military unit down and we're going to get a hegemony bonus. So the hegemony bonus is going to give us points. And remember, we need 25,000 of these points to win. And also we want to hit um, 5,000 and we also want to hit 10,000 points so we can unlock some of our special abilities. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose this. And if you notice, a four minute duration timer appears. Since we're going on ultra fast speed, uh, the time's going to fly by fairly fast. It's not actually going to take four minutes. It's going to take more like two minutes to complete. Now that we have one village that's active and our spice production has been enabled, I suggest that we need to grab a second village, take it over, and now we need to focus on Plascrete production which will allow us to increase uh, the number of buildings that we can make. So what we're going to look for on the map is a location that has a mineral output. So it says this area contains a high amount of minerals plus 50% Plascrete factory resource production. So this is a territory that we definitely want to take. So we're going to take our units and invade this location. So instead of just simply clicking on the village, we're going to wait till our troops are close, then we're going to attack the village. And that's going to prevent them from shooting at us until we're at basically point blank range, and we're going to suffer just a little bit less damage. As we're fighting, we want to make sure that we're monitoring the health of our units. We're going to back this guy off just for a second, 
so that it potentially engages on a different troop and we're going to kill it off because we don't necessarily want to lose one of our troops uh, right away because that costs money and resources. I'm going to go ahead and chip away at this troop. And then we are going to take control of the village. Notice too, we have the option now to pillage the village. What can occur is if you really need some money, go ahead and pillage this village and it will allow you to basically get that 326 Solari and it kind of resets the village and a timer will appear. And what that means is that you can't just pillage the village over and over again, but a reset timer will appear and then you can attack it later and either annex the village, take it over, or you can pillage it at a later point in time. I do commonly pillage villages to simply gain Solari early on in the game. Um, it's a really good option, especially if you don't have much money. Here's our second village. We're going to go ahead and left click on it. We're going to select building, specifically the Plascrete factory. We're going to click on it, drop it into this location. And as with pretty much all of your villages, especially ones that are producing either spice or something that you really need, definitely back it up with militia. In this case, I'm going to throw two uh, melee militia into the mix and then I'm going to throw a demolition militia into there. So once this village comes online, my Plascrete production will go up significantly, which will allow me to start building more and more buildings in my empire. Just a quick adjustment to this video. I wanted to let everybody know that during me putting this video together, the hegemony bonus or the hegemony total needed to win the game was increased from 25,000 to 30,000. So the game just patched, it's still in development, and now you will require additional points to win the game. One of the really fun aspects of this game is the voting and the ability to spend influence. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click over here on the right side of the screen. And then notice that we have a certain amount of days that we can have to make votes. So earlier on in the video, I made mention of all of the different resources and all of the different things that can impact the growth of your empire. And this is gonna be no different. So having a basic understanding of all of the different aspects of the game is really, really important, especially when it comes to the launch rod voting. And here's an example of what you can do. So once you have that basic understanding of what you need to do for this voting and you understand all the basic resources you can intelligently make these decisions so i'm just going to kind of mouse around and and click on different things here so go ahead and make decisions based upon what's best for your empire in a lot of cases you will look for maybe to give advantages or bonuses to resources that you really need some of. So maybe you can get that resource. Alternatively, if you can somehow negatively impact one of the other factions, then that's something that you should do as well. So keep that in mind when you're playing the game. And this voting sort of session and the Lonsrod Council, it will cycle uh, pretty often throughout the course of the game. So just make sure you're constantly clicking on it and understanding what's going on and using your influence appropriately to win the game. It's time to talk about water production. As your empire is expanding, each and every village that you have is going to start consuming water. So I'm clicking on this village of Todd Yell. I can't really pronounce that, but if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you're gonna notice that I need five water to subjugate that village and bring it into my empire. Notice that my water production is only at a four currently. That means that I need to invest in what's called a wind trap. The wind trap is a device that just simply is driven by the wind and it absorbs moisture from the wind on the planet Arrakis. There are certain areas in the game which have higher wind strength and those are the places that you want to use to build your wind traps. So as an example, I'm going to go ahead and mouse out. I have a couple different locations. I'm going to go down to this village and notice that my wind strength is only a three on this village, but I go over to this one and it's going to be a wind strength of four. So I really want to put the wind trap down um, in the location which has the highest amount of wind. This is just my personal preference. I don't put wind traps down into the game unless the wind strength is four or five. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead, or four or higher, I think there are some locations that have a six. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this village. And notice that it's still in the process of doing the Plascrete factory. Um, next, what I'm going to do is build a wind trap. And when I mouse over this, it says plus three water for each level of wind in the region. So that's pretty fantastic. I'm going to generate 12 uh, water from building a wind trap in this location. Some of them are pretty awful. They only have like a two or even lower category. And those are places that you want to avoid for building wind traps. It is time to talk raids in Dune, Spice Wars. A raid is when a Fremen war party comes out of a siege and is targeting one of your locations. So in this case, we can see that this war party is advancing on our village. If we do not have enough militia, the war party will take over the village and it will take it from us and we will lose any sorts of production that's occurring from that village and whatnot. So the militia are fighting, you can see it on the screen, and they have success, successfully repelled that invasion. That's why you need the militia. If you do not have militia in the game, you will constantly be losing your villages and you will not be able to expand properly. Now that we have a decent amount of water and we have repelled a raid from the local Fremen, we're going to look at expanding our empire further. I'm going to go under the development tree and there is a tech upgrade I'm going to walk you through that I find to be very useful. And it's called the processing plant. Money in the game is very difficult to come by. So early on, I want to find a location in which I can process minerals. So I'm going to now select the underworld contracts and I'm going to get that going as my next tech upgrade. What I'm going to do is click on these rare elements that are literally in the territory to the south of my capital. And what I want to do is target that location for a processing plant. This will increase my Solari production significantly. So what I'm going to do is first select that processing plant upgrade. And next I'm going to find a location that is close to my empire in which I can build a processing plant when it comes online. And notice that based upon my knowledge, it's slowly beginning to build. And that's something that I want to take very seriously. So I'm going to take my troops and I'm going to move them toward this city over here. And when I get close, I'm going to go ahead and click on it and attack it. And what I'm anticipating is that I'm going to wipe out this um, sort of local area. And I'm going to take it and that's going to allow me to eventually build this mineral production node, which will drastically increase my Solari. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and take over the village by having a quick combat. I'm going to go ahead and wipe out the locals. And I'm going to go ahead and take control of the village. Um, as you can see, I'm managing my resources pretty well. Every time I'm getting into a situation, I am increasing my water, I'm increasing my plascrete production, I'm increasing my solari production, and that's something that I want to take very seriously. As the game progresses, some of your resources are going to become constrained. As an example, my manpower is becoming a little bit sort of in the danger zone. I'm only getting plus one for this, and that means that I need to take that into account and take that very seriously. So I just got my second agent. I'm going to go ahead and grab it and put it in the spacing guild. And what you can see here is that the spacing guild increases manpower production. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and constantly be looking at all the different resources I have and making sure that I'm compensating for any deficiencies that are starting to pop up. So I just gained access to a new knowledge and this is the processing plan. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. We're going to click on this village and under buildings I'm going to look for the processing plant and notice that this is going to give us a massive amount of Solari production and that's something that we want to um, get going and specifically for the rare elements and the minerals found. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and that's going to get 
the production of our processing plant going, which keys off of these mineral nodes, these rare element mineral nodes in the game. Now, something I just mentioned is that our manpower is starting to suffer, and we want to make sure that we have a consistent amount of manpower so that we can be hiring troops and that we're not sort of going into the negative territory when it comes to manpower. That could be really deleterious to our empire. And as a result of that, I'm going to go ahead and click on this village and I'm going to add a building slot for a hundred Plascrete, which is fantastic. It's something that's pretty trivial at this point because I've been managing my Plascrete production successfully and I was able to really harvest these minerals. So I have a lot of Plascrete that is in, uh, in reserve. I'm going to go ahead and add this and next what I'm going to be looking at is a recruitment office. And if you look at this powerful upgrade, it says plus four manpower production. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down onto the game. Please note, though, that it has a pretty significant Solari drain, which is going to be 14, and a Plascrete drain of four. So kind of what I'm doing is constantly mixing and matching. So I literally just put... Um, a new building into play to increase my Solari production. Now what I'm going to do is make sure that my manpower production is kept in check. But in order to do so, I have to start spending some of that Solari. So you're constantly adjusting and you're constantly changing your strategy to meet the different resource constraints that you are encountering over the course of the game. All right, at this point, I think you've seen a decent amount of the structures that you can build and sort of the basic tips and tricks for probably the first, the first 30 to 40 minutes, maybe even 45 minutes of this game. So if you can use these basic strategies in playing the game, I think you can build a solid foundation for establishing your empire. So I've kind of walked you through the basic requirements, the basic buildings that you have. And from this point onward, what I want you to do is just focus on looking at the resources that you have at the top of the screen and building appropriately and responding appropriately to any deficiencies that you are about to encounter. So if you start running out of batteries, go ahead and, and figure out how to build a fuel cell factory. If you have manpower issues, you can deal with that. If you have plascrete issues, in this case we have a ridiculous amount of plascrete, it's not an issue. Um, if you have solari issues, you can deal with that as well. If you look, our empire is very, very healthy. Everything is in the green zone. We're growing um, at a pretty steady rate. We're able to handle the spice taxes and the spice quotas that have been imposed upon us. And what I want you to do is just simply use this as a basis and this as a foundation for you to start advancing. Just keep the same tips and tricks and tactics that you've been using to establish your first several sort of territories in this game and then expand across the map. Um, and eventually what you'll do is you'll start fighting the other factions. So I'm probably gonna make another video for more advanced tactics. I'm gonna teach you how to destroy enemy capitals. This is something that's a little bit um, sort of difficult to do. And I'll also teach you about some of the sort of later game tactics when you're encountering the Fremen Seishas and things of that nature. So um, stay tuned to this channel. I will be making another Dune Spice Wars video very, very soon.